Um, yeah, uh, we're here uh, in Backford uh, in our church building again, uh, ready to praise God, ready to worship our God. Uh, we've uh, had some worship music here in the room um, and we are going to open God's word together. Let me just take my mask off, I think, so I don't look so much like a, a highwayman. Um, Great to see uh, uh, a few of us socially distanced here uh, at a safe uh, at a safe space, uh, wearing masks, all having had our temperature taken uh, and having sanitised. Uh, an encouragement to those of you who are watching online: if you do want to to come to church, but you're a little bit worried, uh, there is an overflow space. So if we feel that there are too many people in the room. We can uh, put people through into the school building uh, where there are laptops so you can watch it uh, live there. I know you can watch it at home live, but you could actually maybe wave to us or speak to us along the, the length, shout to us along the length of the, of the, uh, the, the pathway uh, if you wanted to, to be on site with us. Uh, greetings to those that are still under lockdown and can't be with us. Uh, we think very much of Mary today who uh, he's watching and uh, we miss you we know you, you would love to be with here with us uh, and for anyone else in manchester uh, who's still under under lockdown so uh, we're praying for you let's do this let's read um one verse today um, it's going to be from john's gospel chapter one verse 17 says for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Uh, we give you our worship, our praise. We love your name. We love your appearing, Lord. We simply ask now that you would fill us with your spirit. You would anoint, meet with us, anoint every thought, every utterance, every word with your Holy Spirit, with your very presence. Lord, we know that man is nothing, we are nothing. But we rely on the communication from the heart of the living God your word we think this time of your word made flesh and dwelling amongst us as we come up to this Christmas period where we remember the incarnation the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ Lord we celebrate that but Lord we focus on the God who is ever with us Emmanuel God with us and we worship you today. Fill us with your life, with your joy, with your peace, with your words of life. Touch hearts now, Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. Here's a question that is on everyone's lips at the moment. Are you complying with the law? <laughs> this is the, the point with uh, as we as we meet again, uh, the government has allowed us to meet uh, in uh, church buildings again. Are you complying with the law? Now you know it's it's funny in a way because you know as uh, as God's people we are not typically lawbreakers, are we? It's not very often that you hear uh, of people who are uh, involved in churches, uh, Christians going out and and beating people up or or uh, <laughs> or uh, or causing criminal damage or or um, stealing or murdering or whatever it is. It's, it's it's quite rare, to be honest. I'm not saying that there isn't the odd occasion, and that maybe our, our sins are are the ones that are, are less seen. Uh, but the point is, we bring them to the throne of God, 
every thought captive. When the, when the sinful thoughts arise, we, we do come under that. But I was just thinking about that. It's like compliance with the law is a big thing at the moment. Uh, and, you know, we are people who, as uh, I know Pastor Shallow was saying this a few weeks ago, we're, we are people who have always respected rule of law. Uh, and we were, I think in many ways we are in a dangerous season of history. Because law can be changed very quickly, without warning. And also at the moment, law can almost be changed without check. Previously, laws in a nation had to go through a rigorous process of, of uh, checking by a parliament, and two houses of parliament, royal approval, and on all of these things, so that we had, uh, so we had a safeguards in place. Whereas at the moment, I think, uh, due to this crisis, uh, laws can be brought in almost immediately without, with, uh, with no sort of redress or question. Which is fine for a virus. It's fine for medical needs, you know, we respect that. But it could set a dangerous precedent. Mm. We have to be aware of that. Because uh, there could be other things that are not so not so palatable. You know, uh, it says in the verse that we read, for the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Think about that for a moment because there are many world religions. There are many faiths, there are many ideologies. And when I say religion, I know I probably will upset people, but I, I will include secularism, humanism, atheism as a religion. Because it is. I know people always sort of say, well, I'm not religious. I am not a religious type. I don't believe in it. But actually you are, because actually maybe you have as many rules and regulations as, a, as someone who adheres to a faith does. And maybe you have as many spiritual uh, ideas uh, and uh, maybe you just don't call them spiritual ideas, that's the question. Um, but actually, you know what, there, there is a... There are, the, the religion relies on law, doesn't it? All religions are based on law what you must do what you must do uh, to achieve heaven what you should do as a good person as, a, as, any, as a, uh, an adherent uh, as a follower this is why I say actually secularism and humanism uh, are exactly the same because there is still that that uh, that conformity there is still that uh, idea remember the Philippian jailer he said what must I do to be saved remember the rich young ruler he said, you know, I've, I've kept all the commands. What, what thing do I yet like? There, it is innate within us to think, I must do something. I must do something for my salvation. I must do something to be spiritual. I must do something, conform to a law, to, to obey. To, I remember when, when, years ago, when somebody came to our church for the first time, and they were all quite excited, and they oh, I really love this church, and I want to start coming here regularly. Uh, and then but they said, they said to us, so what are the rules? What do we have to do? And I said, well, no, that's not the point, is it? What was the answer for the Philippian jailer? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And all your hands, faith. Mm -hmm. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, to trusting a saviour. That's it, trust God. There's nothing else. The God of all grace. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
that's the that's the whole issue here that is the whole of our our law our law is just the law of grace the law of faith you know we just we trust him we don't we don't abandon doing good things we don't break laws deliberately that's not the point but uh, that's not our focus our focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ on the presence of the living God and on him in our lives and he is the one who is able to keep us from falling he is the one who does the work in us the Pharisees were were very good at putting burdens onto people remember that in Matthew 23 verse 4 it says for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers we have a, a, a saying don't we won't even lift a finger to help yeah where does it come from that's where it comes from you know it's like oh uh, uh, somebody's got a somebody has got a burden somebody's got a a, 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 a need uh, and it's you know and the religious people who should be there to minister life who should be there the priests the Levites the Pharisees the people who actually had the law of God God's word the guardians of God's word they should have been there to give life to people they should have been there to minister to people you know what, what was the heart of the Lord the Levites were there they were there to make sacrifices that was the whole that was the idea of the Jewish law really was to show, man, show mankind their own heart and say look you're not going to make it you're not going to be able to, to keep all of these laws you're not going to be righteous but actually you know what God has made a way and the priests of the Levites the religious people the guardians of the Lord they were there to make sacrifices to bring atonement to the people to bring forgiveness to the people to bring a, a, an openness to the living God to the ordinary man on the street but what happened was it's now they, they because they had this idea that oh the law can be kept and me and my righteousness I know how to keep it then for the uh, the uh, the few cases where they were clearly breaking the law the Pharisees managed to devise lots of other rules to reinterpret the law of God um, the Jews today I think they rather than read the Torah they read the Talmud which is the Jewish way of interpreting the Torah so how do you how do you how can you possibly fulfill the law well you reinterpret it this way so that you don't have to keep it really is what is is that is that's the that's the heart of man if you think about it this way then you're okay but now you know it's like that's not the point that you've completely missed the point of of, of, of God's law there it was for us to rely on him and so with the Talmud the Jewish leaders they, they, they gave people extra burdens to bear you know I've seen it done in churches I've uh, met people thankfully not so much from our church but uh, uh, you know like uh, I've seen it in uh, there are certain churches that believe in keeping all of the Jewish laws we've met, met people from those churches recently God bless them you know I feel so heart sorry for them just because you know it's it's such a thankless and disheartening worldview to think I must keep every law of the Old Testament 
And again, what happens when you talk to them, you sort of say, well, what about this? They say, oh, well, it, I, you know, I, and they do, they exactly the same as the Jews. They have a way of explaining it away to say, well, it doesn't actually, you know, if you do it this way, then it, you, and you are actually keeping the law and you're thinking, wow, uh, it's sad, really. But we also have to be very careful about binding burdens onto people. Oh, you should be doing this. Oh, you know. Why weren't you in church on Sunday? No, it's like, if anybody ever turns up for church on Sunday, I just celebrate that it's a miracle that they came. You know, it's like, it's never going to be that case that, you know, you know, well, you know, why weren't you there? Because, you know, no, we're not there to, to put burdens on to people. You know, can we keep those things ourselves? Can we always be that? Well, I'll always be at church. I'll never fail. You know, you know, we, you know what? things happen life gets in the way maybe we're ill maybe we have to go somewhere maybe we're traveling maybe we're at a conference maybe we're somewhere else that maybe all sorts of things can happen you know don't get ever get proud with these things it's like no it's like we fail don't expect perfection of other people and don't sort of come around criticizing and saying well that yeah well that all well, that should be done like that and that shouldn't be done that way and that why because that's what's that that's just binding burdens onto people that people we're not able to bear ourselves wow you know Today, religion is secular. In the past, there was the uh, there was a form of, of getting people to do what uh, what you wanted them to do was by the threat of, of religious laws, like in the the Old Testament Jews, but also the, like the Church did that in the Middle Ages by saying. You know, well, you know, you can be disfellowshipped. You can, you know, you if you don't pay for an indulgency, then you will not get into heaven. And you know, oh, you know, there's there's purgatory. There's a so you know, it wasn't this idea that you were saved or lost. It wasn't this idea that you were born again or not. It was this idea. Of, well, there's a waiting room. There's purgatory. And well, you know, if you ch pay the church enough money, you do enough good works, then maybe you can get in. You know. Well, why, why did they do that? It was a way to control people. And, you know, very often when states get involved in religion, that's what happens. In a, in a secular age, how do you manage to make people conform? And, you know, one answer is, you know, by, by a crisis. And I'm not saying that, you know, this crisis has been falsely created. No. This... Uh, this the disease is real and it's there but what I could say is that maybe it can be seized upon by the wrong people as there's a danger that it can make everyone conform uh, to laws that actually are not necessarily from God we have to be wise as serpents we have to be as harmless as doves and uh, as I say, we will we will always respect the rule of law in this nation, in this country. And uh, but our first allegiance will always be to the living God and to the Lord Jesus Christ, who supersedes all other things. And for the believer, for the believer. The Lord Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Remember that? Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, one of the first things that Jesus said. First public speaking. What does he say? I did not come to destroy the law, but that the law might be fulfilled in me. The Lord Jesus Christ, from the outset, said, I'm the fulfillment of the law. Think about this, Romans... Eight. Now we all, oh Romans 8, we're going to quote, quote verse 1, aren't we? No, we're going to quote verse 2. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. 
If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour, if we're saved by grace, we are free from the curse of the law. We are freed from the law. Now again, that means that's not to say that we go around right. I'm going to go around and uh, I'm going to spray paint uh, Chester Town Hall and and uh, and you know steal donuts from the donut man and eat them in front of him. And, you know, oh, I can do a, I can do what I like because I'm free from the law. No, that's not the point. But spiritually, you know what? We are free. We are set free by what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. We don't have to come under people's laws. You know what? People will give us laws. We will give ourselves laws. But you know, that's not the point. We need to trust in the Spirit of God and what He's done. And you know what? We are set free. The Lord, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and uh, spiritually speaking we are set free as I say that doesn't mean that we, we are free from the laws of the nation we respect those laws but but spiritually there's freedom grace came by Jesus Christ now think about this it's the second Sunday in Advent and uh I like to sort of focus on that for a, for a little while. Look at Matthew chapter 1 for a moment. There we have the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ from Abraham going forward 42 generations as we have probably read before, maybe some of you know it off by heart, maybe some of you have read it many times, but it's an interesting one. Uh, now, if you read down that list, there's a lot of very famous names, isn't there? Lots of very famous names. And most of the kings of Judah that are there, uh, you know, there's some funny spellings of them. So Hezekiah may come out as Ezekias and things like that, and uh, you know, and uh, um, you know, you've got uh, Zorobabel instead of Zerubbabel, and uh, you know, it's just the the difference between the Greek and the Hebrew, basically. And uh, you might not uh, Ozias instead of Hosea, uh, uh, but uh, you know, it's like, but you, you can sort of see that list of names and recognise them. Uh, uh, as the as the as the kings, all of the kings of Judah are there. Not only that, all of the patriarchs are there. David, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all you know, everybody. Or you know, these are the, the the stories from the Old Testament. You can go back and you can read them. One major character that is not there: Moses. Think about that now. Uh, we were mentioned that the other week that actually God said to Moses at one point it was when the people made the golden calf wasn't it he said listen I'm going to destroy these people and I'll raise up a new nation it's going to come from you it'll be your family I, you know, I'll, I've done with them I, I, all the promises that were made to, to, to Abram your father will be inherited in you Moses went and pled with God and said no because you know what if Egypt sees this and the other nations around, they'll say, well, the God, the God brought the people out of Egypt, but he was not able to bring them through the desert. Uh, and it'll be a reflection on God's character and God's nature. I believe that actually God did it as a test to Moses to reveal his heart. Because even though God was going to give him the law, Moses still had a heart of grace for the people. But there's also another aspect there that actually God rightly chose not to use Moses. Because Moses in the New Testament is always referred to in relation with the Old Testament law. And that's what he symbolizes. Now the Lord Jesus Christ had come by the law, by the family of the law. That would be a very different picture 
But actually, you know what? The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, that's a different inheritance. You know, uh, we read in, in, I wasn't planning to mention this, otherwise I'd have, I'd have looked it up. You can read in, in, in Hebrews, you can find it for, for homework. I think it's about, wasn't it, chapter 7, 8, somewhere around there of Hebrews, where, where it talks about uh, Jesus as being a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Not after the Levitical priesthood. Not according to the law. But a spiritual priesthood. A priesthood of grace. A priest of, of love, actually, you know what then? That, that was a, there was a love relationship there. A, a gentle relationship between Melchizedek when he met Abraham. It's like, oh, you're my friend. There's life, there's encouragement. There's, there's fellowship there. Not, oh, there's the law. Oh, you should be doing this. Oh, isn't it? You know, that's a completely different relationship. The Lord Jesus Christ as a priest came under the priesthood of Melchizedek not the priesthood of the law a different interpretation a different vision a different uh, a different route but think about this as well um, I was quite encouraged I was listening to a, massi a message by a pastor Kim Shibley of Silver Springs, uh, one that had been shared on the, on our, uh, our little group church group um, for Mary for your benefit. That's uh, he's also known as as Pastor Frilly Curtains. Um, that's going back to the the lockdown where he was the he was the pastor who had Frilly Curtains behind him when he preached from home. But anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so just so so Mary knows who we're talking about there. But um, yeah, but he was preaching on Rahab. It's a good message. I encourage you to go away and listen to it um, just on their Thursday night uh, service. But, you know, that story of Rahab, who she was, where she came from, but where she ended up, you know, she ended up in the nation of Israel. She ended up as, a, as part of the covenant nation. She ended up married to Salmon. She ended up the mother of, of, of Boaz. She ended up in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was looking at, at that uh, the other day, because often at this time of the year we do consider it. And it's funny, because often we tend to think of, oh, oh, there are, there are women mentioned in the genealogy of Christ, which is very rare for women to be mentioned. Um, and you've got... Uh, you've got uh, Tamar, you've got Rahab, you've got Ruth, and you've got Bathsheba mentioned. And they're all stories, but a lot of them involve sin. You think, oh, well, it's like, it's not, uh, not a very uh, edifying story, the story of Tamar. Uh, the story of Bathsheba, well, uh, these, aren't, these aren't exactly Rahab, the harlot, who it's like, well, it's like, but I was thinking, you know what? In one sense, we this is a a thing that often preachers do pick up upon. But why, why pick on the women? I know, in one sense, it, it, you know, it is unusual for women to be in the genealogy, and this is obviously why people do pick up on that. But actually, you know, it's the whole history. You know, you we could go through this whole genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And see actually that it is a history of sin, of sinners, of people that actually God had to take and use and, and transform. And it's like, well, you know, like, oh, oh, the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, it has to be pure and holy. And you know what? If man wrote the book, if it was a man-made religion, that would be the emphasis, wouldn't it? Oh, the holiness of this person. He was so, he was so much better than everyone else. Now, we know that he was Godhead. And we're not 
taking away from that. He was the he was the chosen one. He was the anointed one. He was the Messiah. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And you know we know the names of of uh, um, uh, of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, my wife found this. Uh, thing which is quite edifying. We have an advent calendar at home. We never usually do that, but uh, uh, we have this. Uh, you may have seen actually there was a string of numbers on the wall behind me when I was doing the Wednesday night service. Um, we may have moved it actually because it f fell down from where it was. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but actually, but the thing is there. It's nice. My wife found this online, and it's a, an advent calendar, and you, you have number for each day you turn it round there is also one in the school year you turn it round and there's a name of the Lord Jesus Christ on the back uh, of who he was and one of the titles of who he was and it's a it's a nice edifying uh, take on the advent calendar to say hey this was who God was, was sending to the world you know it's a beautiful picture of who God is and the Lord Jesus Christ yes he was perfect he was set apart. But you know what? If man had written the book, it's like, oh, every member of his family were all perfect people. But actually, that's not the way. Because God has only got sinners to work with. He's only got people who are un unregenerated to start off with. He's only got people who are a bag of bones, flesh with the life of God breathed into them. Dirt, as Adam was but formed into something that God took pleasure in. Abraham starts it all off. Oh, but Abraham was the father of faith, wasn't it? Oh, so spiritual, so faithful. Well, yeah, so faithful that he had to take matters into his own hand with Hagar. And so sort of think, oh, oh, God's not coming through. Over you know what, I better get on with it myself. No, no. That's not right. Oh, you know, so faithful. Oh, uh, you know, so faithful. Leave thy father's house. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just take Lot with me. It's okay if I take Lot with me, isn't it? You know, I'm, not, I'm not really disobeying the commandment. You know, you know, I'll just, you know, just, just take Lot with me. You know, oh, Abraham, the father of the faith. So, so, so un, untouchable. And think about this. Genesis chapter 20 for a minute it says there there's the story of Abraham when he goes to see Abimelech and this is not the first time that this has happened Abraham has gone to see Pharaoh and he has lied about the fact that oh Sarah she's not my wife she's my sister because I'm afraid that somebody, if they think she's my wife, they'll kill me and take, take her from me. So out of cowardice, I, I'm going to lie and say something that's not true to Pharaoh. But then the same thing happens again with Abimelech. But then there's an interesting footnote on this. It says in verse 10 of, of Genesis 20, and Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely that the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You know, it's the sort of thing that, you know, somebody tells you that at a dinner party. It's like, oh, okay. Right. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. You know what? When the law came by Moses, Leviticus um, chapter 20 verse 17 
says that that you know you shall not uncover the nakedness of your of your sister your father's wife it says that the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother it's very clear and you and you know and there's a there's a curse on that it's like no you're not going to do that this is not god's way this is against the law wow so actually you know what abraham by the law would have been completely excluded Isaac what happens with Isaac well he does the same thing doesn't he he lies about uh, he lies about his wife oh you know you know she's my sister and then they see and you know, hang on the way you're reacting with her she is not your sister yeah, and they say this to him and then he he uh, he admits that no, this is actually just a barefaced lie. There's no there's no sort of you know. I mean, Abraham had a leg to stand on. Well, actually, she, technically, she is my sister. That's not a great testimony, really. But technically, I wasn't lying, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I sort of would prefer if it had been a lie. But there we go. Um, but then. Isaac, no, it's just downright lies. It's just barefaced lies. There's no truth to it at all. She's, yeah, at best, she's a distant cousin. I think once removed or something like that. So, you know, it's like, well, no, she's not your sister. You know, and Abraham uh, and Isaac gets into trouble with over the wells and all sorts of things. And you know what? These things are these things are are spoken against in God's word. Think about this, Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-one. Verse 15, it says, If a man have two wives, one beloved and the other hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son of hers be that which was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he shall not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the other son of the hated which is indeed the firstborn but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the firstborn is his this story remind you of anybody particular in the Bible mm -hmm. it's Jacob isn't it really hang on a minute so Jacob how have we how are we doing here so far the book of the generation of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham Abraham well we know he's excluded begat Isaac well he's been excluded as well and Isaac begat Jacob well Again, he's done exactly the thing. In fact, they've made a law to actually, after Jacob, when Moses comes along, that says, actually, you know what? Everything that Jacob did was wrong. Shouldn't have had multiple wives anyway. <laughs> and actually, you know what? He shouldn't have hated one of them and loved the other one. He shouldn't have preferred the, the children of the ones that he loved over the ones who were actually first born. And anyway, you know what? He stole the, the firstborn right from his brother. That's wrong as well. You know, it's like he's a trickster. He's a scoundrel. He wrestles with God. And it's like, no, this, you know, this is, this is crazy. And Jacob begat Judah and his brethren. Judah is mentioned because he's the one here in the line of Christ. But again, wow, where do we start with Judah? Whose idea was it to sell Joseph? <laughs> it's like, well, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you know, like, uh, we'll get rid of Joseph. Well, you know what, uh, well, you know, let's make some money out of it. Whose idea was that? Hmm. Yeah. I wonder. Not only that, it's like, again, you've got, how does he begat 
Perez, or Fares as it's called here, by Tamar. And I've already said, you know, that's not the greatest of, of stories. You can, you can read the laws against that in Deuteronomy 23, 17. You know, there's a law against that there, sh there, there should be no daughter of Israel, should be a harlot. And yet it's like, oh, you know, well, I just saw it at the right roadside, so that's fine. Yeah. No, you know, this is not, this is not good. This is, a, and it, and you you start to look at the 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 genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we see. Yes. Guess what? Salmon and Boaz, it's the same thing. Rahab, a harlot, the mother of Boaz. Ruth, Moabites. Now think about that. Deuteronomy 23. <laughs> it's crazy. Deuteronomy in 23, in verse 3, it says, And the Ammonite and the Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. They shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever, because they met you with they they met you not with bread and with water in the way when they came when you came out from Egypt, and because they hired against the Balaam, the son of Baal of Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse thee. Wow. So Moabites, they're not allowed to be included in the congregation of the Lord. But Ruth is a Moabite. Rahab is a Canaanite. And it's like, well... So then it comes to David. How many generations was that? David, king. David, the man after God's own heart. Was that, was, that, was that ten generations later? I don't think so. No. Boaz, Obed, Jesse, David, already. So you know what? The law would have excluded David. David shouldn't be able to approach to the Lord. David should not be able to, to come before God's presence. David shouldn't enter into the house of the Lord. Even more so, he shouldn't eat the showbread. That's not even there for, for anybody but the priests to eat. And, and it goes on, and maybe you know, tonight maybe we'll continue on for the sake of time. But this is the heart of God. That Jesus was coming not to show people the law, not to give people a, a, a religious uh, law to, to, to adhere to, but to bring the grace of God to mankind. Grace and truth. Now think about that. Were all those stories true? Yeah, that's the truth of it. And we, you know what, sometimes the truth sets us free because there's no pretense anymore. And it's like, well, the truth, oh, yeah, well, I'm a sinner. Yeah, I've done this. And this is my story. I'm not proud of it. It's not great, but it's the truth. But the Lord Jesus Christ came full of grace and the truth. Grace and truth came by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the key for the, us as believers that we desperately need grace and truth together. Grace on its own can be just totally lenient, totally slushy, oh, do whatever, yeah, no punishment, oh, well, you know, easy going, well, I don't want to be too hard. Truth on its own can be cutting. This is the truth. This is what you are. This is how it is. No compromise. But the Lord Jesus Christ is what mankind needs, full of grace and truth, not pretending that things aren't real, 
not denying, not playing the, the field, but coming in honesty before God, coming in deep reverence before God, and saying, yeah, I know I'm a sinner, and I know that I don't have a hope, but I rely on the grace not on the law, not on uh, religion. I can, I can bolster myself up and invent religious laws to make myself look, look perfect. I can say, well, this is, you know, this is God's law and this is the way, God's way. Well, you know, look, look how, how well I've kept it and look how well I've done. But that's not the, the answer. But the grace of God, that is the answer. The Lord Jesus Christ full of grace and truth the Lord Jesus Christ coming but bringing hope bringing that opportunity for us to get out from under the law, to get out from the worries and concerns of this world the expectations of people the expectations of, of the state the worries and concerns, the pressures, the burdens of this life to a place of rest, to a place of life, to a place where we can worship freely and say, Hallelujah! This is my God. This is my Savior. This is the God who came. He brought me grace. He brought me to. You know what? I cannot stand before God in my own merit. But in the Lord Jesus Christ, anyone can stand before God. Anyone. You know what? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their terrible histories, their awful family stories. Imagine when they got together at Christmas. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you remember the old time? You remember here, yeah, you remember when you when you 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 stole your brother's birthright. Ha ha ha, wasn't that a great day? Ha ha ha. Yeah, it's like, you know their family history. Oh, you remember when you pretended like she wasn't your wife? Yeah. Oh. No, it's like it's 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 like it's horrible, isn't it? But you know what? God used them. God did it, and it, not only that, he he identifies himself to Moses, who's going to get the law, as I am the Lord, thy God, the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to stand with these people. I'm going to put my arm around them. I'm not ashamed of them. I'm going to stick by. I made a promise to them, and I'm going to keep the promise to them. You know, this is it. This is who I am. The God of grace and truth. And He's the same for us as well. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. We trust Him. We trust Him by grace. Not by our own efforts, our own works, or anything else. We just rely on His grace. His absolute perfect grace. But He will never leave us. He won't forsake us. And now because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary, the past is gone. It's paid for. It's gone forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we come to the Lord Jesus Christ full of grace and truth. Not to the law of Moses, not to the law that binds burdens onto us, that gives us things that we can't keep up with, that we can never adhere to. But to a God who says, hey, I was faithful to every saint in God's word. Whatever their lifestyle, whatever they did, all the things that they did, we didn't even get as far as the kings of Israel, the kings of Judah, and their lifestyles and everything that they did. But God still mightily used them. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you're the God of all grace. You're the God of, of grace and truth. And Lord, we rely on you. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of the Christmas story. And we thank you for the gift of the Easter story. That there isn't one without the other. 
And Lord, we just thank you that actually the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the earth was the greatest thing that any of us could ever look for, any of us could ever expect or rely on. And we thank you, Lord. We worship you today. Thank you, Lord, that by your grace we are saved. Thank you, Lord, that by your truth we're made righteous by your 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 love for us your perfection we love you today Lord. and Lord we pray if there's anybody watching there anybody listening at all who has never put their full trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and doesn't know that, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ is their personal saviour Lord, we just pray that they would. this would be the day when they say, Lord, I, I'm just the same as Jacob, as Abraham, as Isaac, as anyone, as David. As, I'm a sinner like any one of them. I failed. I've made a mess of my life. But I know that I need a saviour. And I trust that if I look to you, not my own goodness, not my own works, not my own laws, not my own ideas, not my own philosophy but I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ then I can be saved then there is hope then there is newness of life thank you Lord we worship you today Lord bless the rest of our day be with each one here Lord be with each one who is watching online Encourage hearts today, Lord. Heal our nation, Lord, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to say goodbye to our online uh, viewers now. So, uh, take care, God bless, and speak to you again soon.